Hey guys, so welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast. My name is Mina and this is going to be the first in um, hopefully a new series that I'll be hosting on this channel, um, which is a Knit With Me series. So I recently, I say recently, about a month or two ago, spun um, these yarns and um, they've come out to be approximately a DK-ish weight, DK to worsted-ish weight. And I'm planning on knitting an, inf an infinity cowl, sorry, get the words out there. And it's just gonna be plain knit tube that you cast on with a provisional cast on, you knit your tube and you get to the end of one color, you join on with the next color, you knit to the end of that, and then you graft the ends together and you get an infinity cowl. I thought this would be a really fun, simple um, sort of uh, project to do a Knit With Me series. There are some uh, skills that could be um, new to some people, such as provisional cast-ons, grafting, um, and things like that. But the majority of the knit is fairly simple, it's just a plain tube. You can also put in stitch patterns, whatever you want to change it up a little bit, if that's something you're interested in. So in this first video, I'm going to show you um, me winding the yarn, which I actually already did, obviously, because I'm showing you the cakes. I'll insert that footage in a minute. And then I will show you um, the method I'm going to use for doing the provisional cast on. Now, there are several different options for doing provisional cast ons. I do a version of a crocheted cast on, um, but I crochet directly onto the needle. There is another way, which is more common, I guess, and it's the way I used to do it. And I'll give you a quick demo of that as well. And then, um, I'll show you how I get set up, joining in the round and um, getting started knitting the first few rows and that'll be the first video and then I'll have another video where I'm just knitting the tube and joining on the next colour and it'll just be like little snippets here and there of me knitting on this essentially because otherwise it'll be a bit boring to watch like however many hours of me sitting there just knitting round and round. Um, it'll just be some little snippets over however long it takes me to knit this project and then the last video will be about finishing and um, how to pick up your provisional cast on edge, how to graft the stitches together um, and how to block and finish the cowl. So like I said this is going to be the first in hopefully a series and this one is just going to be an infinity cowl, like tube cowl. And I'll probably do some other ones in the future as well and some of them um, might be for designs and some of them might just be for really simple knits just to as like a basis as a baseline so this is a good i would say uh beginner-ish level project um obviously with the provisional cast on and grafting at the end it's some slightly more advanced skills that you wouldn't necessarily um do on your very first project necessarily but there's nothing difficult about them as long as you follow the process and um it's definitely very manageable for a beginner, especially if you've got a couple of projects under your belt um, and you just want to do something a little bit different. So let's get started. That was me winding the yarn. Um, I also wanted to say that you don't obviously have to use hand spun for this project. You can use commercial yarn, you can use any weight of yarn um, for this. I will probably write up a really simple free pattern to go along with this, including some links to these videos. The pattern I'll publish it once the series is complete and I can take some photos and um, I'll put it up there. So like I said, my skeins are roughly a DK weight-ish. Both are over 100 grams, so there's a lot of yardage here. 
and um, so you could use commercial DK, you could use worsted weight, you literally could use any weight of yarn. And depending on how long you want the loops to be, you can, um, that will determine how many skeins you want to use. So if you just want a single loop, um, like tube locale, then one skein is probably going to be enough. Um, especially down to like a fingering weight, one skein will be more than enough. But if you want it to be a double loop where you can wrap it a couple of times, then you might need two or more skeins of yarn, especially with the heavier weights. So these two together actually is about two and a half skeins worth of yarn in terms of weight. It's like 260 grams here or something. So, um, so yes, there's that to bear in mind. And then obviously your needle size will be determined by your um, yarn thickness. That's the word. So I've gone with um, my DK-ish weight of yarn with a four and a half millimeter needle. So typically I would do four millimeter on a DK, but because it's hand spun and because I don't want it to necessarily be the densest um, cowl, because it is a loop, so it's really double thickness. It doesn't need to be like super, super bulletproof. Um, so I'm just gonna go with four and a half millimeter, which will um, hopefully make it easier to knit on my hands as well. I've gone with, I think this ends up being like a 20, four inch loop, I think. I can't actually remember the length of this cable, but it's the shortest cable I have in my Chagu interchangeable set. And I've got four and a half millimeter tips, which is US sevens. And these are the five inch tips. So um, whatever that ends up being. I'm gonna cast on, I think, I think 120 stitches. We will see. I'll cast on and see uh, what that looks like. And I might make changes. Like I said, I haven't planned this in advance. I haven't swatched because it's a cow it doesn't matter if it's a little bit thinner a little bit wider it will work either way and um and yeah so i'm just going to rearrange the camera setup and show you how um i do provisional cast on let's also just please ignore my messy desk setup here because honestly i would film this upstairs where i have better lighting and all of that but if you've been following the main podcast you'll know that we are having construction work going on at the moment and um, they're repainting the outside. So there's scaffolding up and there's people outside all the windows and the apartment above us are renovating. So there's a lot of noise um, from the builders and stuff like that. So I am stuck filming this in my office, which is fine. It's just the lighting's not necessarily the nicest. So I just have some scrap fingering weight yarn here and I have a crochet hook. I'm gonna do a crochet method. Uh, there are plenty of other methods of doing provisional cast-ons that don't necessarily involve a crochet hook. So I'm using an E-hook or a three and a half millimeter hook. Um, my needle size that I'm using for the yarn is four and a half millimeter, but that actually doesn't really matter so much when you're doing provisional cast on that it be the same size, as long as it's close enough. This is the closest I have. Um, and yeah, so the, tradi the the more traditional or the more common way of doing a provisional cast on to start with, what we're going to do is we're just going to put a put a slip knot onto um, into the yarn, and then pop that loop onto your crochet hook, and you just um, pull it tight. Oh, wrong way, wrong strand. There we go. You don't want to pull it too too tight, but just so it's snug on there. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to crochet, do a crochet chain for however many stitches you want to cast on. Um, this isn't gonna be the method that I use, so I'm only gonna do a small number just so I can show you how this method works. I'm gonna cast on a few here. Okay, so what you end up with is a, um, oh, there we go, crochet chain. Get that to focus, there we go. A little crochet chain here and obviously I'm doing this with fingering weight yarn so it's quite small hopefully you can see that and what happens is when you turn it over you get all these little bumps you get the bumps on the back of the crochet chain Let's see if I can show you that and then what you would do is you would go in with your needle and your yarn that you're going to use and you will pick up into these bumps on the back of the on the back of the crochet chain you pop your needle in and pick up your stitches that way. This is not the method I'm going to use just because it is a little bit more fiddly um, and it, it's kind of an extra step that you don't necessarily need to do. So the way I do it, you start the same, you pop in, you make a slip knot out of your scrap yarn and you pop it onto your hook and then 
you take your working needle that you're going to use you hold it in your left hand with your i mean i'm right-handed so this is my setup um with your tail from your scrap yarn again held against the needle that just helps to anchor your yarn there you put your crochet hook over the top of your needle and then you wrap the yarn around the hook like you would if you're doing a yarn over and you pull it Ooh, this is why you don't want to pull that slip knot too tight because it was a bit too tight there I couldn't get the hook through it okay let's loosen that up a little bit I'm not a massive crocheter so this always beginning this first bit always takes me a little bit of fiddling around to get done okay so you put your hook over the needle you wrap the yarn from underneath the needle around the top of the hook and then you pull it through the loop that was right the slip knot that was on the needle and there you go you've got your first stitch first provisional cast on stitch on your needles there we go can you see that there so you just continue like that so you put your hook with the with the loop that's already on it you put it over the needle wrap the yarn around the hook and you pull it through the loop over the needle wrap around the hook from underneath you want to always make sure your yarn is coming from underneath the needle and you pull it through you just keep doing that and then you get your stitches coming up on the on the needle there and so these are this is essentially your provisional cast on but you're using a crochet hook to cast on directly onto your needle rather than having to do a crochet chain and then picking up your stitches this is just skipping that extra step and you're just going to cast on straight onto the needle this is why the size of your crochet hook isn't super important in this because you're casting on directly onto your needle and um, yeah so hopefully you get the idea with what I was doing there I'm going to try and change the camera angle and show you from a different direction in case it's a bit clearer I have the camera balanced on my lap now so hopefully um, this will work give you a better closer up view so you've got the loop on your needle and this could be your sorry I'm trying to get the focus to stay put this can be your slip knot at this point so it doesn't matter that it's already got stitches on it it's all the same you put your needle you put your hook over your needle Put your hook over your needle, wrap the yarn around the hook, and then you pull it through the loop. Over the needle, wrap yarn around the hook, pull it through. And make sure your yarn's always coming from under the needle. Wrap around the hook, pull it through. So this is the whole thing, the whole mechanism. I mean, I do it like this because I'm a flicker, so I can just flick the yarn over the crochet hook. But if you were a thrower, um, you know, you put your hook over there, wrap the yarn around, hold on to it, and pull it through. But I just flick it around the needle, the hook, because that's just how I knit. Um, sorry for any camera shakiness, because like I said, this is balanced on my lap right now. There you go, that's how you do this version of a crochet provisional cast on. So I'm just going to finish casting on and then I'll be back with you to get started knitting. casting on and what you do when you get to the end the last one you just cut a tail and then you just pull the yarn through the last loop that you've popped onto your needles nothing fancy there at all um, and then what we're gonna do we're just gonna knit one row with your um, main yarn that you're starting with and then that's when we start to join in the round so I'm just gonna 
just gonna do that. Uh, also, in the end, I think I cast on about 130 stitches. It doesn't actually matter how many stitches I cast on because it's just gonna be a plain knit in the round tube. So if it's in not the right exact stitch count, not the end of the world. I think it's actually more like 132 um, because I ended up dropping a couple of cast on stitches and stuff. So really not a big deal. Um, okay, so we're just gonna start with knitting. Pull out my yarn, leave a tail. You don't have to leave a super long tail, but and we're not working in the round at this point, we're just working flat. So you're just gonna knit one round. So I've knit one round, I'm ready to, one row, I'm ready to join in the round and the most important thing to make sure you do here is that your stitches are not twisted. So you just, when you lay everything out, you want to make sure all of your, you see here, like at this, okay, like you see here my stitches have twisted around so you don't want that to happen when you go to join to knit in the round. You want everything to be, so you want all of your cast on stitches to be pointing to the inside and none of this sort of like twistiness going on here. So all I need to do is just straighten that out. There we go. Now my cast on is all straight and not twisted. Um, okay. Then I'm just gonna pop the stitch marker. I just have one of these little round, these little round ones. Um, pop that on and then start working in the round. So when you get to the end of your round, you'll, um, this is a good opportunity just to make sure your stitches aren't twisted because if they are, you can still fix it at this point without having to rip back. And yeah, following this round, my stitches are not twisted, which is great. You might notice sometimes when you get to, after you've joined in the round, after the first round or two, there might be a bit of a gap here. Don't worry about it. That will close up over time. And if not, it's going to be grafted to the end. It'll be fixed by the end of the thing, it, you, does not, you don't need to worry about that, that's not you having made a mistake or anything, that's just the way it is. Um, don't worry about it. Alright, so now I'm just going to continue with my knitting and uh, yeah, I guess that is it for part one of this video. Um, just keep knitting. And like I said, you can always pop in a stitch pattern if you'd like, or just do plain, plain knit, 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 or I might add in some garter rows or something every now and again, just to make it interesting. But we'll see. I have no serious plans or ideas about this. I'm just gonna let it do its thing. Okay, so I will see you in part two. Just quickly before I sign off, I wanted to show you that that gap um, completely closed up. Not there anymore. The gap at the beginning of the round after the first little bit, it's gone.
mask on.